So we played this party, uh, the band, GBB, we played a party at this venue. We thought we could probably throw a better party than that. So we took the whole year figuring it out, because we're musicians, we don't necessarily put on events, we play at events. Asked you know, a handful of our fans if they could help us, so then there's a nucleus of people who helped us out to make the whole thing go. Just over time, I think that uh, people realized that they had missed that kind of interpersonal interaction, in-person interaction. Um, <laughs> that came along with the whole dead scene and, and culture. And part of it is not that it's like they're like trying to like catch on to what they missed, that there's this weird crazy thing with the, the Grateful Dead that like, it's still like thriving, you know? GBB fans, are you ready for more live music? Yes. Are you ready for more live music? Yes. There we go, now I hear you. They, they're just feeling their love of the music, their passion. And they're, they're technically excellent musicians. And, and to, to do the Grateful Dead justice, you have to be technically incredible. I remember going to shows in the stadiums, and I remember going to shows where you camped in a gravel parking lot. And I like to see how this has all grown. The experience is so much more than the two hours in the show. They've really paid a lot of attention to the ambiance, so kudos to the ambiance technicians that have made this place so lovely and so comfortable. Just so you know, where I'm sitting, it's 101 degrees right now. It's warm, but Everybody's chill, everybody's mellow, everybody's friendly. It's a really lovely little space they've created. So they have, they've built this community that's now kind of self-sustaining uh, uh, apart from our shows. Yeah. I mean, it's become a social circle. You know, it's the island of misfit toys a little bit. You know, it's the greatest audience that any rock and roller could ever ask for. If I took Friday off and Monday off, my bosses, they finally realized the Grateful Dead to you is like golfing is to us. It's like, yeah, look, you know, I'm gone. I'll, I'll see you guys when the shows are over, you know? <laughs> This, this throbbing thing all night, you know, the dance floor fills up first song and it stays that way till the end of the night. It's this thing that you just keep it, you keep this thing going and they're all with you all at the same time. And unexpected things happen. And the Aztec said what they say. Grateful Dead tapped a need for adventure and expression. That need didn't go away just because the Grateful Dead stopped existing. There are folks who have that need, they have that desire. And, you know, fast forward to 2016, that's still alive and well. And the music attracts those same people, you know. People those type of people are still going to keep getting born. It's yeah, not exactly. a. It's not something that is this locked in a time capsule. People who who are going to seek this type of adventure in music are going to keep coming up. It's one thing to dance in your living room with your headphones on. It's another thing to dance in a field with 500 of your closest brand new friends. It's another thing to dance in a big field with 10,000 of your closest friends at a bigger festival. My fear is that this thing is going to grow and grow and grow and then we won't be able to have the cute, tight thing anymore. There's only room for four or five hundred people in this place, uh, on, this, on this meadow, and that's all we'll ever have there. And we just love it.
We need love is stronger than anything. There's nothing in their music and their message that doesn't resonate with me as a human being. And that I want to expand into the entire world, that we might all live in peace and, and be harmonious. We're talking about the dignity of spirit. We're talking about that we are all more important than anything else. And we need to realize that. That's it.